One of the typical comfort and convenience features offered by modern vehicles is automatic climate control. You basically just set the temperature and forget it, and the computer takes over the rest, automatically selecting fan speed, outlet temperature, as well as the mode door through which the air will come in contact with you as well as passengers. But while this may seem like it's a modern invention, the truth is that automatic climate control has really been around for a long time. In fact, 2024 is the 60th, that's right, 60, 60th anniversary of automatic climate control. We're going to explore in this video a little bit more in detail about automatic climate control, who invented it and what the different setups were back in the time, and take you through a brief history of it. Let's get started. The first thing to know about automatic climate control is that it was first introduced in, well, you could probably guess a luxury car, but could you guess which one in 1964? If you said Cadillac, you were correct. Cadillac was the first to introduce automatic climate control in that model year as a comfort and convenience feature for passengers. Now, the automatic climate control went through a number of iterations, but this first version of the automatic climate control really didn't have too many manual overrides that customers could select from. You can see in this picture from the 1964 Cadillac brochure, there are in effect just two different selections that one can make for automatic climate control. The leftmost position was more of a lower fan speed selection than the rightmost position. So you kind of got a little bit of a lower fan speed selection and a higher fan speed selection, depending upon which of those settings you selected. That isn't to say that there were only two fan speeds. In fact, there were multiple fan speeds on this early Cadillac climate control setup. In fact, take a look at this diagram from the 1964 Cadillac service manual, and it shows many elements of the climate control functions, including blower speed. And Notice there that there were five blower speeds overall, a low speed, a medium one, medium two, medium three, and high. Although when you were operating in heat mode, there was only the low blower, medium one, and medium two that were available, nothing higher. And then when the air conditioning was operating, there was a medium one, medium two, medium three, as well as a high. So a total of four blower speeds in addition to low. Now this diagram effectively states what is happening associated with the climate control as the HVAC programmer is effectively controlling the air mix valve, the blower speed, the outlet duct temperature, the coolant valve that enables coolant going into or off of the heater core, where the air is coming out of, and what the air source is. So think about this as on the far right, you have maximum cooling, and on the far left, you have maximum heat. So take a look at the far right, and you can see there that when the programmer was in this setting, you had the recirc mode on, that bottom most portion. Then you have the air conditioning outlets would be the ones that would be outputting the air in this particular setting. There was no bi-level at this point. So the outlet air was either coming out from the floor or from the upper registers. It could not be coming out of both simultaneously. Then you have the coolant valve position, and when the maximum cooling is commanded, you would have the coolant shut off into the heater core, and that would be typical also on the manual climate control systems. Then you have that the duct temperature would be as cold as possible. The blower speed would be high, and then you can see that there's the power servo travel, the air mix valve travel that are basically governing some of these outputs as well. So a very sophisticated but simple system that actually employed three thermistors or thermal resistors at the time to detect and determine which setting the HVAC programmer would be placed in. And basically, there was a thermistor that would read the in-cabin temperature, the ambient temperature, as well as the duct temperature. Those thermistors were arranged in series, and so the signal that the programmer would get was the sum total of the three. And from that, it commanded what you see here. Now, as years would go on, some things would change, but basically, the automatic climate control, until Cadillac introduced digital climate control in the early 80s, would basically remain the same. 
As I mentioned, there was by level that would eventually be added. And so that became an intermediate position between air coming out of the floor as well as the upper registers in later years. And I believe that over time, maybe one fan speed was added to the automatic climate control so that you had five speeds plus the low blower. And as an example, on the heat setting, you had three medium speeds in addition to low that could be activated versus the two that you saw in the original system. So some refinements were made, but by and large, it was pretty much a very similar system, like I said, all the way up until the early 1980s when Cadillac would replace this manual climate control with digital control. And I have to say it also works pretty gosh darn well. These climate control systems operate in some ways actually better than modern climate control. I don't know about anybody else, but I find that on my modern cars, the automatic climate control just never seems quite right. It's kind of hunting around with the air outlet temperature or the fan speed, but these were quite consistent, I would say, and again, quite reliable. So Cadillac introduced the automatic climate control in 1964 that was called Comfort Control. That was Cadillac's name in those early years. And Cadillac actually precluded you, if you wanted air conditioning, from getting manual control. You had to get either no air conditioning or automatic climate control. And that continued on for many, many years on Cadillacs. Whereas Lincoln would introduce their first automatic climate control in 1966. And you could get no air conditioning, you could get manual air conditioning control, or you could get automatic climate control in your Lincoln. Interestingly, while Lincoln would take all the way to 1966, and Imperial would take all the way to 1968 to introduce automatic climate control, you could get automatic climate control even in your Pontiac in 1965. So Cadillac effectively had a one-year exclusive on the automatic climate control before it became available to other General Motors divisions. And Pontiac, as I said, picked it up in 1965. In fact, my 65 Bonneville has it as the automatic temperature control. And then in 1966, Oldsmobile would pick it up and call it the Comfortron setup. Pontiac didn't really have a sexy marketing name for it when it introduced it in 1965. I believe they just called it automatic climate control. But Oldsmobile branded it Comfortron. And, well, that was pretty sweet, I guess. Buick would also have an automatic climate control setup that, interestingly, in some model years, wouldn't even have a temperature selector. It would just say cool and warm, and you would move the slider bar. It looked just like a typical slider bar for manual HVAC controls, but it wasn't. It actually was automatic climate control. So everybody did it a little bit differently. Now, one of the great things about the Cadillac setup that wasn't true of some of the other setups was that the Cadillac would actually have the air pass over through the air conditioning evaporator first, and then in series have it pass over the heater core. And this was unique to Cadillac in the early years. Many other cars had the heater core as a separate system from the air conditioning evaporator. So you couldn't blend the two air modes together. But when Cadillac introduced its comfort control, that's what they did. And it was really a genius setup because in doing so, you didn't have to have blisteringly cold air, as an example, coming out of the air conditioning vents. You could have it slightly warmed if you just wanted to take that cool, that super cool and frigid sensation off. And believe me, these R12 air conditioning systems, the air conditioning, the outlet temperature air could be absolutely frigid. That is a fact. So frigid, in fact, that I've driven a number of cars and some of my vehicles that still have the R12, if I drive them, I'll find on a humid day that the exterior windows will all fog up. They will all fog the front. I actually have to operate the windshield wiper if I put the air conditioning on full blast because the glass on uh, the outside is below the dew point temperature of the air, and so condensation forms. Again, that's the windows are fogging up, not on the inside, on the outside because the glass temperature is below the dew point temperature, and it actually becomes hard to see out of the cars. The back window will fog up, and I have to put the rear defogger on or defroster, and the front window will fog up, and I have to put the windshield wipers on, and it looks absolutely bizarre, but that's what happens on these cold systems and that are charged on R12. They are absolutely frigid when they're operating correctly. 
So in any case, as I mentioned, Cadillac introduced the automatic climate control in 64, Lincoln in 1966, Imperial in 1968, other General Motors divisions all throughout the mid-1960s. And now it's something that's pretty ubiquitous on cars. It's rare to find a manual controlled HVAC setup on any car, high level or low level or high price point, low price point today. They seemingly all kind of have it except the more bargain basement vehicles. And as I said, Cadillac did quite a good job with that introductory climate control. So next time you're driving around in cool comfort, be sure to thank Cadillac for their valiant efforts. In any case, hope you enjoyed this video on the history of automatic climate control. If you did, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Check out the video thumbnails at the bottom left and right for some suggestions for you. Thanks again for watching.